Hi everybody, Rick again. We've got a few questions that have come through either via email or over the phone and we really thought the best way to get all the information out there for all of you to share in it was to run this short video. Well, I know the builders lots of things I guess. And remember that I'm trying to give you these in support of the information we already give you on the presentations. An owner-builder is somebody basically not in the business of building. Now the reason that owner-builder permits exist is to protect the industry and protect those builders that have gone through a lot of study, a lot of work and have their own businesses. You can build once every five or six years depending on where you are. In some states it comes down to three and a half years and that's really the reason that owner-builder permits exist. It's to protect the industry and those guys that are out there as genuine builders. So an owner-builder, I guess, is somebody who is not in the business of building. That's the best answer I can give you. Well, no, they're not. And the reason that they're not is that each of the states have a different authority who controls owner-builders and owner-builder permits in their relative state. Now there are only two states at this stage that require mandatory courses to be completed and that is New South Wales and Queensland. Queensland you're required to complete a course if the work's valued at over $11,000 and in New South Wales it's over, if it's valued over $12,000. If the work's over about $5,000 you need a permit but you don't need to complete a course. In the other states no mandatory course is required, however it's your responsibility in those states to prove that you have the capability to be an owner builder successfully. It normally requires you to complete a statutory declaration and in some cases such as Victoria read quite an extensive information pack that they've put together. It's all about protecting those genuine builders in the industry. What will be the point of having builders licenses and going through the study and the work to produce and to make or to, to build up your own business if anyone could just go out and build anything anytime they wanted. When we say you can only get an owner builder permit every five years or six years or three and a half years depending on the state, just remember that that permit might run for that whole five or six period, five or six year period, if the work is to be done on the single property. So if you're continuing to extend, then you may be able to, in some instances, you'd have to ask your local authority whether under the current permit that you have, you can include additional works. It's normally best if you're thinking about doing extra works over those years that you include all of those works on the one permit and then go for extensions in time to allow you to continue the work over a period of say three or four years. Look, the fact is that the courses really are about trying to give you some skills. We're not going to try and teach you how to build your house practically. We're not going to give you the skills to swing a hammer, hang a door, lay tiles. Although, you know, from time to time we might discuss some of those things on some of the videos and the forums. What it's about is being able to manage your project properly. Get the best out of your project, your contractors and your suppliers. Buy right and save money along the way. That's really what it's all about. It's a project administration, project management type course. That's really what we're trying to achieve. How long is a piece of string? You may not save any money. In fact, a lot of times owner builders want to spend about the same money they would spend building a project home, but get a better product, a bigger product, a, a larger home, better quality, whatever. Now that is all achievable. If you were to go out, find yourself a home that you wanted to build, have a builder quote on it, and then go out and build that home, you could probably expect to save around about 20 to 30% if you do it right. But again, as I said before, and I stress you've got to be disciplined, you've got to use the systems, and you've got to be very, very well coordinated to do that. It is possible. A lot of our people go on and do exactly that. They do save a lot of money, but it's all up to you. It's how well you buy, how much time you're committed to put into your project. What you're going to save is the builder's commissions on their subcontractors, their markup on supplies. You'll save on areas that you can do things yourself like you know move materials around site you'll save on their administration and overhead costs all up somewhere between 18 to 30 percent it's a good number to think about the 
traps are and yourself not being disciplined enough to carry out the project correctly. Have I heard of horror stories? A few, but not many. Normally the owner builders, once they've done the course, they realise just what's involved and they undertake the project with their eyes wide open. Look, we quite often say that if at the end of doing the course you say, hang on, I can't do this, then we've done our job because we've probably saved you a lot of heartache. But most people really realise that, look, we can follow this through, we can do it, we can do a good job and we can save money. There are probably some horror stories out there, but there's a lot of horror stories out there when people build with builders as well. So I guess the numbers would probably be pretty much the same. Stay disciplined, stay focused and stay on track. It can be. But one of the ways to prove to them that you are worthy of lending money to is to show them you've completed a good owner builder course and that you've got the support of that owner builder course provider on the way through your project. It's a little bit like any business going in and presenting a good business plan and saying, well, this is how I'm going to do it. These are the threats, but this is how I'm going to manage those threats. So if you're well prepared, then certainly the banks do like to lend to owner builders now. There are some restrictions on it and all of the finance issues, I'm hoping to do an interview with a financier very, very soon to talk about all of the implications of owner buildings and the intricacies and the best way to go about it. So keep an eye out. That's actually probably going to be the next video we do. Look, all of those insurances are listed well in the course and really you should get together with your broker and ask some professional advice. It depends a little whether you're extending or whether you're building a new home. Now if you are building a new home, pretty much the insurance that a builder would take out is what you need to take out. There are some specific insurances, contractor or risk, to cover you know, theft and damage and things like that on site. Uh, public liability, of course, you need to look at. You won't need professional indemnity because you're not doing it as a business. Uh, workers' compensation, if you're going to employ anybody, you need to consider those things. Really read the course notes and have a talk to your broker. Sometimes when you start any project, it can appear quite daunting. You can look at all the tasks that are involved and think to yourself, how am I ever going to get through this? It's just Mount Everest is a term that I hear all the time. You know, really we talk about project management as being a series of small steps. You take it, you break it down and you start. In the study guides, there's a terrific timeline that you can build up yourself. Now, when you're building a construction schedule, you'll start and try and put things down in order. That's a great place to start. Designing, planning, those things. Read through the course notes, have a look, try and get a good idea. Most of us have got the ability to communicate well and to talk well. People are just human beings and they like to be treated with respect. That's one of the keys to talking to contractors and suppliers. Also showing them that you're organised and you know what you're talking about. If you use the tools and the forms that we've provided for you through the course and the Owner Builder Project Management Kit, then you really can manage your project well and you'll be able to communicate. Most of those tools and everything that we give you are all handled and looked at in the Project Management Kit. We give you a little bit of an introduction to them in the course, but you really need to download the kit and go through it. We give you construction schedules, we give you door and window schedules, we give you estimating sheets. There's a few tutorials there on how to use them and we're building on those over time so that they'll just get better and better. One of the things I really encourage you to do is get on the forum again and ask, ask the questions, because that'll prompt me to say, hey, there's a few people here not understanding this section. They don't understand how to use this schedule or this form or what it's used for. That'll push me into developing another tutorial to put out there so that everyone benefits from it. I said in our very initial video, I don't want phone calls. I, I just can't cope time-wise to answer everybody's questions over the phone. But I do allocate around about two to three hours a day to sit down and go through all the questions, post the answers on the forum or via email. I'd rather they go onto the forum because, as I've said before, everybody gets the benefit from it and it's about building this community. You should be familiar now that uh, if you take on a course online, I assume that you're reasonably computer literate and that you're used to forums and communities. The forum is our way of building a community of our owner builder students so that we can share information and interchange thoughts and ideas. 
Not secret so much. I think we cover pretty much everything that there is to cover on the course, and, and certainly if you have other questions, I'm happy to answer them. The secret of being a successful owner builder is staying committed and focused. I can't stress that enough. Use the tools that we provide you and be committed to delivering yourself a really good project and a good product. Uh, that's it for the questions that we've got in this round. Have a look on the uh, frequently asked questions. We've got a heap more there as well. Next video that we hope to do, we'll uh, be interviewing an insurance broker or a finance provider, hopefully a finance provider first. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Any questions, please drop me an email, rick.heaton at owner Enjoy your courses and enjoy your project. Thanks again.